the daily code snippet using service-based font face for custom typography. Let's now look at service-based font face. In this case, you are using a service, whether free or paid, to deliver the font files to your user. The most well-known service-based font face is Google Fonts, primarily because Google provides its fonts for free. Another service that a designer may be familiar with is Adobe Typekit. As long as you have an active subscription for Adobe Creative Cloud, you have access to all the fonts for desktop and web that are included with Adobe Typekit. It is also possible to purchase subscriptions with various type foundries to get access to their service-based fonts. An example of a foundry that offers a service like this is Heffler & Company. The advantage of using a service-based font face is that you don't need to worry about converting your font files to all the different type file formats using an at font face generator like Font Squirrel. The service takes care of providing all the appropriate files so that as long as you pay for the service, your fonts will be delivered to the user so that the font displays as it should no matter what browser they are on. It is similar to using a video service like Vimeo or YouTube to deliver video content instead of using HTML5 video where you have to provide all the video file formats for the video to be compatible cross browser. With a service based font face, you just need to know what code to embed in your files to deliver the fonts. You should still use the font stack because if something happens with the services server, that may be a reason the fonts are not delivered. This way, an appropriate font will be chosen to which the user has access. Some episodes ago, we went over how to add a Google font to your web page. It was in the context of the demo page we created. We will review it here so you can see how to install Google fonts into your web pages rather than having it pick whatever font it finds. So if we go to Google fonts, um, you know, you have all sorts of different fonts that you can choose and you can choose whichever font you like. So when you open um, Open Sans uh, in your Google font window, it'll give you all the options that are available. So you have um, light, regular, semi-bold, bold, extra bold, and italic. And you can look at the glyphs palette. It'll tell you a little bit about uh, the designer and the licensing. So one of the main reasons that people use Google Fonts, of course, is because you don't have to pay licensing fees with Google Fonts, and that's why they've become particularly popular. Um, as a um, Adobe user, you also probably have access to Adobe Typekit, and so the process would be similar uh, for any web-based font foundry that you would go to the page and you need to get the embed code. And so for Google Fonts, the way you do it is you select which styles you want to embed. And so I'm just going to pick the light, the light italic, the regular, the regular italic, and the bold, and the bold italic. And um, if we know that we're not going to use a particular weight, then we shouldn't include it. I'm kind of keeping it open by selecting all of these. Um, and why is that important? Well, because the more fonts you select from the uh, from the family, um, you know, the more that your page is loading, and it slows it down. So you really only want to choose the fonts that you know that you're going to use um, when uh, coding your web page. So what you have here is there's two different options, and for bringing in the uh, font into your your uh, web page. There's the link option and there's the at import option. And um, what I'm going to do is use the link option. And there's also the option of downloading if you are using your uh, the Google font into something like uh, your InDesign or uh, other type of um, desktop version. So the other thing you want to make note of is it says here CSS rules to specify families. And the reason this is important is because you want to know how you're going to write this out for it to choose the font that you're loading in. So Open Sans is a font that has actually two words. And so whenever you're using a font that has two words, it needs to be in these single quotes on each side. And you need to put that space in between. and this is actually a font stack, meaning if it can't find Open Sans for whatever reason, so perhaps Google servers are down or there's an issue with the internet and it can't load the font, and in that case, it's going to choose a sans serif 
font uh, preferentially over a serif font uh, when it's trying to find a font to use since it cannot load open sans for whatever reason. So we've copied our code and um, we need to go to our code page and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add it so anything like loading fonts, uh, loading style sheets, that all goes in our head. So we have our opening tag for our head here and we have our closing tag for our head here. And we're gonna put this above the styles. We want it to load the font in before it's trying to do the styles because we're gonna start entering uh, the use of the font in our styles in the style section, so it needs to have already loaded the font. So we wanna put it in beforehand. And what I'm gonna do is create a typography section in our styles. So this code is basically telling the browser to connect to Google, to connect to the Google API, to, to get these fonts, the open sans and the weights that we chose. So the light, the light italic, the regular, the regular italic, and the bold and the bold italic. And so if we want to start including this in our page and we want it to be used globally, we can say the body and it will um, anything that's a child of the body is going to pick up this um, command so we want to tell it the font family and we want to use those single quotes and put the words open sans as we saw on the page and then uh, our stack that if it can't find open sans it's going to pick any sans serif it finds. So if we save and refresh, we now see that it's pulling in a sans serif and it's pulling it in globally. So it's affected all of the typography on the entire page. And it's still using the uh, hierarchy um, that comes kind of preset because we're using h1, h2, h3, h4, and paragraph tags and list tags. Um, but now that you've entered a font, you can actually control the size of things by um, by adding into our style sheet. So if we wanted to affect the size of, let's say, the H1, we would tell it, you know, font size, and then we could pick a number. Um, we can see how this looks, and then. Um, for letting, the equivalent of letting on the web is essentially the line height. And um, a standard uh, a standard reading would be 1.3 to 1.5 M's. We're going to save that and take a look. So you can see it got a little smaller and it's kind of close to here. Um, we can either push it down by increasing the line height um, we can also see if we can add some spacing above our navigation. So uh, if we look here, we've told it to have no padding around. Uh, but what we want to do maybe is add a little bit of padding to the top and the bottom. And so if you are using um, um, the padding or margin, typically you add four numbers, and that represents the top right, bottom, and left, uh, but when you only, if you're okay with the top and the bottom being the same number and the left and right being the same number, then you can just use the two numbers. And again, so here, 20 pixels represents the top and the bottom, and zero represents the left and the right. So now if we save that and we refresh, then you can see that it's a little bit pushed down. And I think what I'll do actually is add the line height to the body. So we have our six levels of headings.
Previously, we discussed how for a service-based font face method, all you need to do is to get lines of code that you need to embed from the service's website and add it to your code. And then you should find out the language you need to use to activate that code. So we saw how with Google Fonts, all you do is go to their website, choose the font, select the weights and styles you want, and then copy the code provided and place it in the head element. This code is the link element that allows your web page to connect to Google servers to pull in the font files that are needed for your chosen font. And then you need to look at the CSS rules to specify families. This tells you how you need to write out the font name in your CSS in order to pull that font into your styles. You need to use the language that Google understands. And it is always a good idea to still include a font stack just in case there is an issue with the server. While we went over what to do with Google, the process will be very similar with other services. We will still need to get an embed code or link to that service's servers, and then we need to understand what code we need to add to our CSS that the service will understand. In comparison, we mentioned that traditional at font face means we need to provide the different type file formats, so there needs to be a mechanism for us to produce those different type of file formats if they are not provided by the type foundry from which we obtain the font. If you are purchasing a font and properly licensing it, typically the Foundry will provide all the font files you need. However, if you are obtaining a free font online, you may only be provided some of the file formats and need to convert the file into other formats. If you have obtained a font without properly licensing it for use on the web, then you should not use this method to produce the files. In fact, the service will ask whether you have a proper license, and in some cases, it will not even work if it finds you do not have a proper license. You should never use a font on the web without proper licensing. Font Squirrel has an add font face generator where you can upload a font file and it will then convert the file into the web file formats that you need. Once the conversion is completed, you will receive a folder of files as well as a style sheet that indicates how the font can be loaded into your web page. Here is a demo of it. So here we are on the website fontsquirrel.com and we've gone to the tab that says generator to find their uh, at font face generator. And um, you can see here that there is a tab to, a button to upload your fonts, and then you can select what kind of conversion you want to do. And um, I'm gonna leave it on the recommended setting, which is optimal, which is recommended settings for performance and speed. And um, I'm gonna click that yes, the fonts I'm uploading are legally eligible for web embedding. And it does have a disclaimer here that they're uh, that you're using their service in good faith, um, that you should honor the licensing agreements of your fonts. So I'm gonna um, use a font that I have uh, legally purchased and have access to. And I, I see that, um, you can see that uh, I have the uh, open type format and the true type format for this font. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload the font. I'm gonna upload the uh, open type font. Okay, so. so it did actually get it and it's gonna show the font that it uploaded right here. It's an open type font, it has 334 glyphs and it's 470 kilobytes. So now that I've uploaded the font, there's a button that appears, download your kit. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that and while it's processing the font, you're gonna see this, um, this bar that shows the progress. And depending on the size of your font, uh, it'll take a certain amount of time. So this wasn't a lot of uh, space, so, so it was actually pretty quick. And so it automatically downloaded my kit so once I get download this web font kit, we can take a look at what kind of files that you receive. And so we can see that we have an HTML file, we have a WOFF file and a WOFF2 file, and a TXT file, and a folder of more specimen files and a style sheet. So if we click on our HTML to take a look at it, we will see that um, this is what a specimen of this script file looks like. So 
as most script files are, um, they're difficult to read in paragraph text. So you would probably never want to use this as a, uh, a body uh, text. You would want to use it only really for display. So some sort of heading. And so we can see samples of layouts. And um, you also want to look at, depending on what your needs are, you can see what uh, languages are supported by this, by this uh, typeface. And you can also look at what glyphs are included in the typeface. And it does actually sh give you information on how to upload this kit and how to use it. And it also tells you how to, how to basically, what code you need in your style sheet to, to use this font. So you can see that we've gone over this before, the at font face command as a selector. And these are the different rules. So we have font family, and it's whatever the web font is, and then you have a, your source, and then the URL of where the files are located. And then in order to pull the style sheet in, you're going to use this link font. And depending on where you put it in, now it's assuming that you're going to put it at the same level as the HTML file, but um, typically I tend to put my style sheets in a styles folder that's inside an assets folder. So I'll have assets slash maybe CSS slash style sheet that's CSS. So it really depends on how you organize your files, what the um, URL will be. Um, just like I will probably put the actual source files in a folder that says, um, you know, assets slash font slash, and then that's where the files will be. And then when you're using the font, you're going to put the selector of whatever text you want. So in our case, we'll probably use it for maybe an H1 or an H2 and put the font family. And then you're going to reference since the name of the, of the font. And it gives you some information about how to troubleshoot this if it doesn't work. So that's what the HTML file is for. So open this in a browser. You can get information on how to install the font. You can get information on the language support, what glyphs are involved, uh, a sample of what it would look like, and a specimen file. And uh, we have our WOFF, and we have our WOFF2. And then let's take a look at this text file. And I would open this up in, uh, I can open it up in BB Edit. I can open it up in any sort of word processing. So this is just a, uh, a file that tells you how, what the settings were to generate the font files. So, so we just finished looking at the HTML file in a browser, but we can also look at the code of that HTML file. And so the the CSS style sheets inside the specimen files folder are the CSS files that are governing that HTML file we just looked at on the web page. So if you look at the code of the HTML file, you see that there are two style sheets being linked, and that would be the specimen style sheet. So we have that specimen style sheet CSS. And if you look at um, the specimen style sheet, it's also importing a grid style sheet, and that's what the other style sheet is. And so the grid style sheet is basically, as you would imagine, it's basically determining the grid of that HTML page. So if we look again at that HTML page, um, basically the grid of this page is being determined by that grid CSS file. So for instance, the grid on here in the glyph chart. So that's all um, being determined by that, these two files. 
So these are not files, these three files, the HTML file, the CSS file, uh, that's a grid, and the CSS file, that's a specimen style sheet. These are not files that you need to load into your website. These are basically informational um, files that help you understand what you asked Font Squirrel to do, what, what files it generated. So really the only um, files that you're going to need to gather together to put on your website are the newly generated web open font face files, the, um, the WOFF and the WOF2 files. You can add that to your collection of um, of fonts that you need to make sure you have loaded up on your website in order to use this font. So I can create a folder that has all the different files that I want here. Now the one that we have missing is the EOT file. Um, that wasn't generated by, by the, our, um, our font face generator. This style sheet, however, this last style sheet we'll take a look at is actually what what you would need to be using on in your site. So you can either load it as an actual style sheet and and use that kind of at import option that we saw with the grid, or you can just kind of copy this and put it into into your code into your own CSS. And it's telling you that in order to use this font family, it's going to call it call it Boathouse Regular. So that's what you need to reference. And um, you may need to adjust this URL if um, if you're going to have it in a particular folder. So, if, like I said, I create a font folder. Then, for the the browser to find the file, it needs to reference that um, that relative file path correctly. So it may need to go into an assets folder, it may need to go into a fonts folder to find that file. And once everything is connected properly, then when you use this file referencing Boathouse Regular, it will load the font onto your page. So once you have the files, you will then need to upload these folders with the rest of your assets, such as images or other media. Then you need to make sure the CSS style sheet provided is being loaded properly so that you can access the fonts. A main drawback of the traditional ad font phase is the loading speed of your website. Depending on the size of these font files, it may slow your website down. In addition, you have to consider the reliability of your hosting since you are the one providing the font files on your server. If your host is down or the connection is slow, this will affect whether your custom fonts load properly. So you can see why service-based font phase has become more popular. It is much simpler to bring custom typography into your websites and if you are unhappy with the quality of choices provided by Google, a paid service such as Adobe Typekit or by other foundries may work better for you. With a service, you don't need to worry about proper formats, licensing, since this is included as either free or three-year subscription, and Google and Adobe will generally have servers that are more reliable and faster than what you can purchase on your own. Presented by Designers Learn Code.